Hello Stormwater Designers, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions instructional videos and today we're going to be going over how to model a detention pond in Wim Swim. Now the process is very similar to how it is done in any other Clear Creek Solutions software package such as WWHM, San Diego Hydrology Model, BAM, etc. But um, we're just going to show you how to navigate some of the different menus. There are some small changes because of course we have the integrated swim elements as well that are included in Wim Swim. If you want to learn more about Wim Swim, go to the description box and click the link there and we'll have an ample description about uh, how you can get Wim Swim and what it can do. Anyways, let's get into this modeling scenario here. I have Thurston County pulled up. It doesn't matter a whole lot for this scenario, but I'm going to select the Olympia Airport rain gauge. If we click the select scenario tab here and we click pre-developed, this is going to be our pre-developed scenario. And unlike some of our other software where there was a grid, um, there's no grid in this one. You can just place elements right directly in the modeling space, similar to something like EPA Swim, which we have instructional videos on as well. So I have a land use space in here. We can move it around. I'm going to click on it. Now we can add some land use area to this basin. I'm going to add three acres of sea force flat, assuming this is our pre-developed condition, connect it to the point of compliance, and then run the scenario, just like any other software that we've had before. So it can generate that runoff, and then we will add a basin and our detention facility to the mitigate scenario, and of course, model our pond. So this is generating our runoff here. Now we're gonna click mitigate scenario. It's here on this menu right here, add our land use basin. Now in this mitigate scenario, there's gonna be two acres of roads flat, half an acre of lawn flat, and then half an acre of that forest was left over. So this is our new a mitigated basin, connect a point of compliance. I'm going to run the scenario there, and then we can actually analyze this basin and look at the flow duration curve just like we can in WWHM 2012 or any other software to see if it's going to be meeting that requirements. And of course, it's not going to, but I, I just want to show you how it works in this case. So the analysis tab is here. If you click on this bar graph icon, go to point of compliance one, just like our other software. And it's going to be looking at the pre-developed flow versus the mitigated flow. Okay, so this facility failed, right? Because there's no detention facility uh, to mitigate this additional runoff caused by the impervious area. So disconnect point of compliance. Add a trapezoidal pond to our scenario here. Right-click to connect this element to the pond. Now we have the pond included. I'm going to quick pond, connect a point of compliance. Just like our other software, we can click auto pond. Auto size the facility, move the slider all the way to the right and click create pond. Now it's going to optimally size this facility uh, for our project scenario here. And then we'll take a look at some of the different graphs and flyover for features that are included. So when this is done modeling and auto sizing, just like any other software, I'll show you what that graph look like, looks like. And then we can get into uh, this modeling scenario. Okay, so auto pond's done running. We have a 106 by 106 facility here. If we go to point of compliance one, we can see that the facility uh, now meets the flow duration standard for the projects, the same sort of setup that we would get in any of the software, just some of the menus look a little different, look a little more updated actually. Uh, but you can see we have the same facility here that we'd have in, uh, in any other WWHM project. So it does pass here. And then you can even use some of these flyover features uh, to view graphs if you include some of the other uh, elements that are included with Wim Swim. Um, and hydrographs and different transects when you uh, include some of the hydraulic elements. But anyways, that's how to model a pond in Wim Swim. If you have any questions about that, you can go to the comments section and let us know, or you can check out Wim Swim in the description box if you want to learn more about it. Anyways, that's today's video, and we'll see you guys next time.